But in my view, today's purpose is how to make our vision happen in a practical way. What is it that we can do practically? Therefore, against the backdrop of the story and the lessons I've just shared, please permit me to propose three pillars or principles on which we can build the Nigeria of our dreams. Those of you who know me and have followed my story would agree that all three principles I'm about to share are principles I believe in deeply and practice. Therefore, these are not theoretical or nice sounding suggestions, oh no, that lack practical relevance, but they are deep truths and principles on which I honestly believe we can build a truly prosperous and great Nigeria. Let me first um, outline the principles, then I'll take them one, one by one. First, we must create the enabling environment by removing the constraints to mastering the Nigerian opportunity. What are the hurdles to mastering the Nigerian opportunity? So that we can open up the paths to lasting success. Second, we must inspire a committed generation or a new tribe to build the Nigeria of our dreams. It has been said it takes only one committed generation to build a great nation. Why not this generation? Third, here is like an admonition to us. We must be contrarian and be right. Be contrarian and be right. What is right is not always popular. And what is popular is not always right. This is a quote from Albert Einstein. That's, I mean, many of us know the great scientist and mathematician or physicist. Pillar number one. Let me now go through them one by one. Pillar number one. Create the, the enabling environment without which prosperity and the good life will be impossible. It has been observed that when you take Nigerians out of Nigeria to other well-functioning countries or systems, they thrive. This tells us that there is nothing fundamentally wrong with Nigerians. It is our systems and environment that are the problem. Using the principles of inversion that I covered when I talked about the man and his son, the scientist and his son, we must systematically remove, I will even say dismantle, all the obstacles and constraints that make us miserable or bring out the worst in us. We must create the enabling environment for our people and businesses to succeed. Our country, Nigeria, is considered one of the most difficult and costliest places to do business in the world. What if we committed to flipping this on its head and we choose to become one of the easiest and safest places in the world to operate and to live in? You know, I liken this to the audacity of faith. Those of us that are people of faith, you know that faith is often built on weakness. You know, people seek faith from positions of weakness. You know, and there is no question that when faith intervenes and prevails, people move from weakness to strength. They don't end up in the middle somewhere. They end up on top. This is what I call the audacity of faith. The audacity of faith. Faith calls things that do not exist as though they were. The vision of our government is to make Nigeria one of the easiest, safest, and most attractive countries in the world to live in and operate in. You know, let me pause and say that, like, I believe in the power of vision. A person must dream dreams. I mean, the reason why we're given imagination and vision, you know, nothing stops you from just dreaming a dream of greatness. Even if it hasn't happened yet, then faith can help you. But as a nation, nothing stops us from dreaming and say, in saying, you know what, we don't just want to get incrementally better. We want to be the best. We want to be the safest. We want to be the easiest. We want to be the easiest place to operate in the world. The interesting thing is using the principle of inversion, the principle of thinking backward. You know what? You can actually jump low hurdles to get there. What do you have to do? We want to systematically remove all the bottlenecks and obstacles that make life difficult. That's what inversion says. Show me where I'm going to die and I won't go there. Show me what makes me miserable so I can avoid it. Show me the obstacles so I can go the other way. You know, so we must remove the obstacles that make life difficult for our people and businesses. The amazing thing about this principle is that it works for everybody. Now, I know that um, Professor Tommy and rightly so pointed out about Machiavelli and vested interest, and it's a very profound point. But let me also say that there are times when there is an alignment of interest. I've been meditating and thinking about this enabling environment. Everybody benefits. The government benefits because people will do better, hopefully pay more taxes and be happier citizens. The citizens benefit. The businesses benefit. It's something that we must get done. 
I believe personally that this is the essence of public service. And in, it is the objective of the President Buhari's government. We must bring the service element back into government and public service. The Muhammadu Buhari government is systematically laying the foundation for a new Nigeria by creating the enabling environment for our people and businesses to thrive and reach their full potential. This enabling environment thing is a big thing because if we solve it, it's a path to greatness. I'm not a political scientist, I'm not a structural economist, but I'm a practical person. If you solve the enabling environment, the grammar will cease. If you don't solve it, we can keep blowing grammar. The people, I mean, it's high hurdles. We must remove the, we must remove the obstacles. That's what it means. Enabling environment means an environment that empowers people when they put in their little or their best, they succeed. Whether it's in school, whether it's in hospitals, wherever they are. And if those obstacles are there, intellectual debates won't do it. We must do more for our people. In 2016, President Buhari established the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council, PEBEC, with His Excellency the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, as chairman. PEBEC, along with its secretariat called the Enabling Business Environment Secretariat, IBIS, has made pro considerable progress since it was established in mid-2016. Early in 2017, as acting president, Professor Yemi Oshibajo signed Executive Order 01 on transparency, default approvals, and the principle of one government. Executive of our order 01 is focused on ease of doing business and enabling environment. In other words, we as a public servant must remove the obstacles in your way as our citizens and as our people. That's what our executive order is all about. Basically making it something that is directed and required by the government that we must do everything possible to make it easy for you. Just last week, the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council had an expanded meeting that included the leadership of the National Assembly and the judiciary. For instance, the Chief Justice of Nigeria personally attended. The meeting also included representatives from states. Building on the momentum and success of the ongoing reforms at the federal level, the Nigerian Economic Council, at one of its recent meetings, agreed to roll out various ease of doing business and enabling environment initiatives at the state level. In the interest of time, I won't go into all this, but let me refer us, for those of us that want to know more about this is of doing business, like I said, it's a big deal. I believe it's the key to, you know, to the good society we seek. But please go to the website, www.pebec.gov.ng, -E so you can see the, 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 the initiatives and the activities of this council aimed at making life easier for you. And you must become active citizens, like we're told by embracing this, understanding it, and seeking that the orders that have been issued must work for you and work for the Nigerian people. There is no doubt whatsoever in my mind that creating the right enabling environment is a path to true and sustainable prosperity and greatness. Given the critical importance of enabling environment, it must not be left alone to governments, but we, we, we should forge a true partnership between governments, the private sector, and civil society. This must be a partnership between all of us. Enabling environment includes both soft infrastructure, rule of law, progressive business and citizen-friendly regulations, functioning and progressive public service, and so on. It also includes, obviously, hard infrastructure, like power, roads, rail, water, and so on. In all these areas, we can form effective partnerships and collaboration between various stakeholders in the economy and in the country. Notably, the government, business, and civil society. All great nations, all great nations without exception, have been built through successful partnerships between government, business, and civil society. It was said that I went to business school at Harvard Business School. When I was in business school, I remember taking a course called Business, Government, and International Economies. This course basically studied countries and why they succeeded or why they failed. The one takeaway for me from that course was that there was no example we did where there was no part, where, where every successful country had a partnership between business and government. In other words, there were stakeholders that worked together to create the country. Nigeria will not be an exception. 
The good news is that I believe that the people are willing. The businesses are willing. And now, being in government, I can actually speak as part of the government. We are willing to form this partnership that will build the Nigeria of our dreams.